In a recent video, I walked through the steps needed to configure a Raspberry Pi 4 for use with the USB-C iPad. And in response to that video, a viewer called Andreas, who is a teacher in Norway, pointed out that the configuration can be much simplified using a technology called ZeroConf, what you might know as Bonjour if you're coming from the Apple world. And what's more, that ZeroConf works out of the box on Raspberry Pi OS, resulting in a dramatic simplification of the setup. In this video, I'll talk you through this simplified configuration, explain how ZeroConf fits in and how it works, We'll also look at using this configuration with Ubuntu, which can be configured using ZeroConf, but doesn't work out of the box. So we'll see how to get that configuration up and running. The core of the setup remains the same. We start by burning Raspberry Pi OS to an SD card, making sure that we configure a host name, enable SSH, and add username and password using the image customization wizard. You don't have to configure Wi-Fi during the setup, but I recommend it in case you have problems getting the USB-C connection to work. Next up, we have to configure Ethernet over USB. You can do this from the running Pi, as I showed in the previous video, but you can also do it directly on the SD card after burning. Pop the SD card back into your machine, and when it mounts, start by editing the command line.txt file, adding modules-load equals dwc, comma, g underscore ether, right before root weight. Next up, edit config.txt, adding dt overlay equals dwc2, comma, dr underscore mode equals peripheral on the last line. Together, these two lines enable USB OTG peripheral mode, basically setting the Pi to act as a USB peripheral rather than a USB host, and set the peripheral type to be Ethernet. Nothing about USB OTG is specific to USB-C. You can absolutely have OTG over USB-A ports. However, on the Raspberry Pi 4, only the USB-C port supports OTG. So for the purposes of this configuration, we have to use the USB-C port on the Pi. With these two configuration changes made, we can put the SD card in the Pi and boot up. After a few minutes, you'll see the Ethernet adapter appear in the settings app, and we can access the Pi using the hostname we set in the configuration wizard. We're specifically using the hostname here because we don't actually know the IP address of the Pi. This is where ZeroConf comes in, and let's see how that works. At its core, ZeroConf does two things. First, it provides a mechanism for devices to get IP addresses, without manual configuration or a central coordinator. And second, it provides a mechanism to resolve host names like the one we gave our Pi into assigned IP addresses. If we take a look at the IP address assigned to the iPad and to the IP address assigned to the Pi, we can see that they both start with 169.254. IP addresses of this form are called link local addresses. And in a zero conf setup, these link local addresses are assigned automatically by a pretty simple protocol. Each device selects a 169.254 address at random, and there's around 65,000 to choose from, and then checks to see if any other device on the network has already claimed that address using a protocol called ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol. If there's no clash, then the device takes the IP, otherwise it selects another random address and repeats the whole process. Because the IP addresses are selected at random, it's not really practical for us to access the Pi through the IP address, because we'd need to know the address in order to find out the address, which won't work. We can fix this using the hostname. There are a few different ways that ZeroConf hostname resolution can work, but in the wild, you're most likely to see Apple's multicast domain name service or MDNS. In an MDNS setup, each device broadcasts its name and IP addresses to all other devices on the network. In turn, each device keeps track of the name to address mappings it receives from other devices on the network. MDNS is standard on all iOS and macOS devices. On Linux, you'll either find it pre-configured or easily configured using a package called Avahi. On Windows, there appears to be some support since Windows 10, but I haven't been able to verify that. On Android, the story is a little bit more complicated, but essentially, there's no guarantee that an Android device will support MDNS. I finally got my Samsung S8 set up, so I'll be diving into the Android Pi setup a bit more in the coming weeks. So hit subscribe if you want to hear more about that. So now that we understand the basic mechanisms of zero conf, we can figure out why it is that zero conf works out of the box on Raspberry Pi OS. And first, RPI OS runs a piece of software called DHCPCD, a standard, and by default, DHCPCD attempts to assign an IP address for all Ethernet devices, including the USB Ethernet device that we've configured on the Pi. When assigning an IP address, DHCPCD will first look for a DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol server and will ask any server that it finds for an IP address. Most home networks use DHCP to assign IP addresses to devices with the router you get from your ISP acting as the DHCP server. But there is no DHCP server running on the network between the iPad and the Pi 
So DHCP CD falls back to using the 169254 link local addresses that we saw earlier. So now we know where the IP address comes from, we can turn our attention to how the Pi shares its hostname with the iPad. Remember that we assigned it a hostname when burning the SD card. Our Pi OS includes the Avahi software package as standard, and in its default configuration, Avahi applies to all interfaces. So we'll start sharing the Pi's hostname over the USB in the Ethernet adapter as soon as DHCP CD has assigned the IP address. Put together, DHCP CD and Avahi in their default RPI OS configurations make for a very simple setup. Let's now turn our attention to Ubuntu Server. Most of the setup is the same. Burn the SD card, configure the image, definitely set up Wi-Fi access here, and then tweak the command line.txt and config.txt files. After starting up, you'll see the Ethernet device show up in iOS settings, but you'll never get an IP address assignment. And the reason for this is that Ubuntu is not configured to bring up the USB 0 interface by default. And until that interface comes up, you won't have connectivity over USB-C. To fix this, we create a new NetPlan configuration that instructs Ubuntu to create the interface on USB 0 and to assign link local addresses to it. NetPlan is the network configuration system used for Ubuntu server, and it's pretty new to me. So although I know that this configuration works, I can't attest to it being the absolute best way of achieving this. A little nuance of NetPlan is that configuration changes have to be explicitly applied using sudo netplan apply. So don't forget that step. After applying the change and waiting for a few moments, we can connect to the Pi over USB-C. And just to be sure, I'll disable my Wi-Fi configuration before SSHing in. For the desktop variant, Ubuntu uses Network Manager and not NetPlan. And although I can get Network Manager to bring up the USB zero interface, I can't get to do that automatically at startup time, which is an essential feature for this setup. For this reason, I've been building my Ubuntu desktop on top of Ubuntu server, and I published a video on that setup very recently, which I've linked above. Overall, I think this is a great refinement to the USB Ethernet setup used in the Raspberry Pi iPad combo. And if you're exclusively using a Raspberry Pi with hosts that support zero conf, there's no reason not to use this much simplified configuration. However, if you need to deal with machines that don't support zero conf, you will need to revert to the original configuration that uses a static IP address. Hope you found this video useful. Hope you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe. And don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well. So you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.